feeling that's exactly what I'm looking for. Let's, uh, let's slip into something a little more comfortable. I mean, slip into an area that's uh, a little easier to film this spectacular beetle in. I always get so excited uh, to show something that I genuinely am really happy to find. My name is Jack, and I've spent the past few years traveling all over the globe to find some of nature's most unique and most dangerous animals. My goal? To show the world that even the most bizarre, or perhaps even deadly, life forms on Earth deserve both our respect and our appreciation. Tonight's mission has us in some beautiful West Texas habitat, searching for one of my favorite beetles on Earth, Amblichyla tiger beetles. These are among some of the largest tiger beetles on Earth, and I'm hoping that through searching pristine habitat, we can not only find one, but uncover some secrets about the inner workings of the lives of these beetles. Let's see what we can find. So what we're gonna be doing as we search for these gigantic tiger beetles is I'm gonna scan mostly fairly open spanses of land here. So we've got all sorts of short grasses, but this nice kind of lighter sandy soil. And it's gonna be really, really easy to see these giant tiger beetles kind of darting over there. These are very active hunters. So they're out searching for ants, other beetles, spiders, whatever they can get those giant mandibles on. And they're gonna mince up that exoskeleton and slurp up all those juices. So uh, we're in some good habitat here in West Texas and we're hoping, fingers crossed, to come across one of these absolutely impressive and fantastic beetles. Now, like I said, this genus, Amblichyla, these are the largest tiger beetles in the Western Hemisphere. So it's gonna be easy to spot them because uh, the species I'm looking for today has a beautiful red and black thorax and a kind of rusted uh, mahogany almost, uh, elytra, that abdomen covering. So I'm hoping that just by scanning these areas that we're able to get our eyes and hopefully catch up to these animals burrow. So I'm hoping if we find one, it's not while he's on his way back home and he can get away from all of us. So uh, we're just going to keep hiking and hopefully we get what we want. Now, after searching hours and hours, we were beginning to feel fairly discouraged. All we had really been able to find was a handful of scorpions using my UV light. Not what we were looking for, though. So we pushed forward and we found a really nice little eroded canyon, which is a favorite type of microhabitat of these beetles. We head down and sooner or later, surely, we'll run across exactly what I'm hoping to find. Okay, folks, I'm trying really hard not to just have wishful thinking and, and getting myself worked up over like a caterpillar hunter or some other large crabid. I don't want to jump the gun, uh, but I have a feeling that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. I want to make sure there's no burrows. It just stopped. So it's, oh, it sensed our light. It's moving. It's moving. You can't see it. It's right there. Oh, oh that is no ordinary ground beetle, folks. startle it yet see this is exactly what I've been searching for right here folks you see this is an amblichyla this is one of the largest tiger beetles here in the western hemisphere just dwarfed slightly by some of their larger cousins <laughs> oh man this is amblichyla cylindriformis this is the spectacular beetle that I was hoping to find. Oh, oh, how beautiful. You could see what I was talking about, that amazing kind of mahogany elytra. Let's, uh, let's slip into something a little more comfortable. I mean, slip into an area that's uh, 
a little easier to film this spectacular beetle in. But uh, great work. This is a high five. This is a high five for, for you, cameraman. There we go. Great work. We got exactly the beetle we were looking for. And uh, let's see truly what makes this animal so unique. Now, these tiger beetles, unlike many other species, are completely flightless. This is where that speed, agility, and fantastic eyesight comes in. These animals are wicked fast and hyper aware of their surroundings, allowing them to not only hunt quickly and efficiently, but to also easily avoid predation attempts. If speed fails, they are of course equipped with some serious equipment in the form of sharp, powerful mandibles, which can deliver a powerful bite to a would-be attacker. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sorry if I seem a little too excited. This is actually the only the second time that I have found this species. I haven't seen this exact animal in years. These are such spectacular creatures, and I've only ever gotten to see them when my family has gone out to West Texas on vacation. So I'm really excited to showcase. She seems calm enough. Well, I say that, I don't want to jinx myself. Come here. Take a look at this beetle. You can come in close, look at that. These are avid, active hunters. And they probe with, you see those nice long antenna there. They just walk through the night, through the shadows, as they search for unsuspecting prey. And they can use that significant and iconic tiger beetle speed to chase down, procure, overpower, and devour their smaller insect and arachnid prey. These are no joke, folks. This is, if tiger beetles are, I don't know, cheetahs, this, this right here is the tiger, true tiger of the tiger beetle world. These animals are so robust in comparison to some of their other cousins. We filmed a handful of tiger beetle species on the show before, but nothing quite this large. This is one of the coolest beetles you can find here in North America. This species is actually really uh, widespread. Sorry, I'm trying to work with you guys to see this animal, but as you can see, nighttime is go time for these beetles. All they've got on their minds is finding more prey, other invertebrates to devour. So she or he is in complete and total hunting mode. They have no time to sit still. This animal lives a very high speed lifestyle during these nocturnal outings. They are disinterested in taking a break at all they are pedal to the metal, folks. Now, tiger beetles as a whole are some of the fastest animals proportionally on Earth, and many species at top speeds lose their ability to even perceive visual stimuli. That's right, folks. Some of these tiger beetle species can run so fast that they become essentially blind. They can't even see where they're going, which can be helpful if you're fleeing from a predator, uh, but that's usually not the speed you wanna be at if you're searching for delicious and delectable prey. The beetles of this genus Amblichyla are again some of the largest tiger beetles on Earth, and they are in fact the largest tiger beetles here in the entire Western Hemisphere. This makes them extra special to find, as I'd have to go all the way to the heartlands of Africa to find a tiger beetle larger than this. Their powerful size opens up a lot of prey opportunities for these beetles, as they're able to overpower and eat many more species than their smaller cousins. A great adaptation to have in the desert where food can be, and often is, scarce. So a lot of you folks may not know at home, but maybe some of you do, I am a huge fan of beetles! And I filmed quite a few beetle videos that I feel didn't quite get the love and attention that they deserved. So if you're interested in watching some more beetle content from me, uh, check out this video up here, I'll pin it. This is a great video showcasing one of my favorite beetle adventures of all time, and I think that you'll enjoy it if you're enjoying this video we're currently watching. But these animals are so, so, so spectacular. 
You might not know this, but it's estimated that these animals are some of the most populous organisms on Earth. That's right. In terms of species we have essentially discovered in the name of science, species we have named and taxonomically classified, beetles make up 25% of that. That means 25% of all described species on Earth are beetles. They come in at a surprising and gigantic amount of 400,000 species described. And it's estimated that the number, the true number of beetles is over three times that. That's right, folks. They estimate that in this world that we are living in, there is probably close to 1.5 million species of beetle, which is just spectacular. I can't wait to find the rest because I already enjoy these ones that we have discovered so much. Now, in addition to being one of the largest tiger beetles, in my opinion, they're one of the most beautiful. Of course, there are plenty brightly colored and iridescent tiger beetle species, but I think the subtle, deep mahogany contrasting with the nice kind of matte black is just such a great combination. A combo that, I'll add, is difficult to see from a distance, forcing you to get in close and really pay attention to the detailed patterns and topography of these beetles. It almost reveals more beauty and detail the longer you look, and that's something invaluable in an animal, I think. When the world invites you in for a closer look, you just can't resist. These tiger beetles are so special because unlike many other species of beetles like scarabs or stag beetles or even the goliath beetle, these animals feed on the same prey throughout their entire lives. That means even when these are cute little chubby vulnerable larvae, they actually sit in a burrow with massive mandibles of their own pointing outward. And they sit in this circular burrow and they wait for unsuspecting prey to sneak by. And that's when this space worm or sarlacc or sand worm comes shooting out of this burrow with those giant mandibles and just ah, grabs this unsuspecting invertebrate and yanks it down into its burrow where it can slice it up with those significantly sized mandibles and use its fibrous tongue to lap up the juices, the connective tissue and everything. And so these are truly some of our planet's most metal beetles. They do not mess around when it comes to survival. And that's how these species are able to survive in fairly arid climates like this one around me. And I'm just in awe. Like I said, this is only the second time I've ever come across this species of beetle. And my first time showcasing it on the channel. So I'm always, I always get so excited uh, to show something that I genuinely am really happy to find. Not that some of my other insect subjects and uh, helpers on the show have not been also really fun to find, but sometimes there's just one that's a click above the rest, if you know what I mean. And these are truly one of them. They're such spectacular beetles. Should I let it crawl on my face then? I think I, I'm employing Dora tactics because I know you're at home going, yes, yes, please. And I'm like sitting idle where I'm like, should I put it on my face? Okay, right? That's what it feels like. It's pretty Dora-esque. Here we go. Oh, it's not that bad. It actually feels so comfortable and nice. Like, you know, a, a, a scalp massage or something like that. I'm kidding. It's actually really itchy for some reason. Wow. Is this not the biggest tiger beetle you've ever seen? It might be hard at home to tell how big this beetle is. I think my smallish hands probably help convey that point fairly well. But, uh, oh man, these are just spectacular little beetles. <laughs> Oh, I was like, I didn't want to get my hopes up when I first spotted it because out here there's quite a lot of uh, tenebrionid, like darkling beetles and some other like caterpillar hunter beetles that are like about this length and fairly dark and from a distance they look really similar. And uh, I don't care about finding those tonight. I wanted to find 
this. I wanted to find this spectacular little beetle. And I'm so happy to have, to have done exactly that because it's so special. Oh, wow. Well, folks, I think sadly our time has come to an end with this lovely, lovely, gigantic tiger beetle, this lovely Amblichyla here. So uh, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this lovely little beetle. So uh, if I leave you with anything, I hope I leave you with this. This planet is absolutely chock full with all sorts of amazing and diverse life forms. Many of them are like this beetle here. Some of them are creepy, some of them are crawly. Some animals on this planet may even be downright dangerous, but they're all here for an important purpose and they're all here to carry out a very special mission. And that mission is to play a pivotal role, a priceless role in the health of not only their ecosystems, but in turn, the health of our planet as a whole. But I hope you learned a little bit about Miss Amblichyla here. Let's get her primed for a classic Jack's World Wildlife kiss. Lovely kiss for a lovely beetle. And we are going to let her get right back to doing whatever it was she was doing in the first place when we aliens abducted her. So let's take her back to where we found her right over here, folks. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful beetle. We're gonna let her get right back to being a beetle. Choop.